What is good people and welcome back to the Hype Report. Thank you on all the support so far on all the episodes. Uh, I believe this is episode four, maybe four? Yeah, I think it's four. And today we've got some really good stuff to cover. There's uh, unreleased Travis's, um, Nike have lied to us. We've got the SB April Dunks releasing. Uh, there's so much stuff to cover. So we're gonna crack on with the weekly roundup and get into it. So starting off with one of the biggest stories of the week, the Nike Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott are releasing next year. Uh, we were told by Nike and well, it was rumored all across social media that there was never gonna be another Jordan 1 Low silhouette uh, in collaboration with Travis Scott. Well, that was complete bullshit because apparently in fall of 2024, we were seeing a new Travis Low. Um, the color code, we don't actually know the official colorway yet, but the color code is I believe black, medium and olive. So there's all these, like you'll see it on screen now, there's all these mock-ups releasing. There's no official images, but there, there, there are these mock-ups covering a green and black kind of Travis Low. Um, it's very similar to one of the OG Travis Lows we saw. There's obviously been so many Travis Lows like since. We saw the golf release in the summer. I believe that was maybe, maybe in September. Um, and yeah, that was, even that golf shoe was an exception. Uh, everyone, was, everyone was under the impression that the, the, I think it was the Phantom Blacks, or maybe the, the one after that was gonna be the, the last Travis Low release. Um, but we saw, Nike and Travis came back with a golf crep, um, and then everyone thought we were done with it, but we're not, we're back. And the response on social media is kind of a little bit different. Usually people are so hyped for a Travis shoe. But I think we're at the point now where we've seen so many of them. Obviously it's still gonna pop and do really well. Like the color concept itself, like the potential colorway we're seeing is really, really popular um, because it's kind of this like khaki and earth green tones that is super popular in actual style and fashion at the moment. So people who are really into like, not just sneakers, but people who are really into like actually styling and color blocking and all that stuff. I'm terrible at will be really really into this prep. Another big news story this week was that apparently the Nike April SB dunks were released early and Nike really messed up, allegedly according to reports across social media. Now, what happened was across the EU stock for the one of the most hyped shoes of the year, the April SB Dunks, was that according to these reports on social media, Twitter and Instagram, what one post goes on to say in fact that it seems like Nike accidentally let people buy the April SB Dunks early. Uh, effectively, from what I gather, what happened, now this is all speculation, there's nothing confirmed at all, um, that Nike allegedly loaded them up on the back end on the wrong date. So what these, and, and customers and, and fans of the SB Dunk and resellers figured this out and they actually went into these EU stores, I think there was a store in Germany, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, a Nike store in Germany potentially, um, and then people would go to the staff and they would ask if they could get them a Nike SB April, uh, a Nike April, April SB Dunk, uh, and they would effectively like, buy in from somewhere else and take it into the store and then they would give it to them. So that's obviously completely fucked up because the main release for Nike sneakers is on the Monday you're probably watching this podcast or as of the week of this release of the pod, um, which I believe is the 27th. Um, so yeah, that's mad. Stock numbers have allegedly been impacted by this. Apparently there's gonna be lower, uh, lower, bigger sizes. Now again, it's all speculation, it's all rumors. I'm not entirely sure how true it is. We will, well, by the time this podcast goes out, we will know how well or how bad the drop went and how much and how, or how little success there was. So I'm praying it's a complete myth and just cap and there's not really much to it and maybe a tiny bit of stock's been impacted, not too much. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're like me, if you're a, I'm a size nine, so it's not a big size, but allegedly some of the bigger sizes have had like some kind of big impact on, on, on the amount of stock there will be. But yeah, we will see, man. Hopefully by the time this podcast goes out, it will be Gucci and I'll be able to get a pair um, and hopefully some of you guys as well. I mean, for me, it's literally the most beautiful shoe of the year. I, I, it is definitely definitely my top three, it, it will in my top three kicks of the year. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed it is a myth, but we shall see. Talking about the April SB Dunk, we also saw a friends and family pair release, or not release, but get leaked across social media. Um, it comes in this pink and white colorway as an alternative approach to the blue and or the turquoise and white mesh from the, uh, the mainstream shoe, April SB Dunk. There's allegedly only 50 pairs available and it was actually spotted on pro skater Deshaun Jordan. Um, he's sponsored by Nike, so that's why he has them. There's only allegedly 50 in the world, and they are absolutely gorgeous and gutted. They are not like a mainstream colorway, and they won't be a public release. It will be completely private, most likely, friends and family. In fact, I think there's been some leaks across Twitter and social media that they have basically confirmed that, or well, like, I don't think Nike have confirmed this, it's a friends and family, but like these big social media accounts who are in the know have all basically said they're friends and family only, which sucks. However, 
They're absolutely gorgeous and who knows, maybe we might be seeing a different colorway soon, but I, I highly, highly doubt it. But yeah, the pink, are, the pink is fire. The blue is still fire. The turquoise I still want to buy. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of an L, man. I really, really wish they released this pink color publicly. But um, yeah, we, 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 we unfortunately from me and you other SB fans, it's a friends and family pair only. Everyone's favorite brand Supreme is back this week. Um, we're seeing a host of items, including this new blurred logo. Um, well, it's not really a new logo, they've used it previously, but it's across a skate deck and a blanket. But the main item of the week, we are seeing a Supreme mini basketball hoop. It retails at $78.88. Uh, there's also a Gore-Tex jacket, like a big Parker release, which is pretty expensive at 518. The camo, the kind of tree camo and white one's really fire. Um, there's a few other hats as well, but other than that, the rest of the lookbook items are pretty dead. Um, but for me, I really, really want to buy the basketball hoop that is on my list for this week. Uh, the drop has been postponed, or not postponed, but pushed back to the Friday. So usually Supreme drop um, used to be 11 a.m. on a Friday, now it's four, uh, 11 a.m. on a Thursday, sorry. And now it's 4 p.m. on a Thursday. But because of Thanksgiving in the States, um, it's being pushed back to the Friday. It's a holiday over there at the moment. So it's dropping 4 p.m. Friday, but by the time the pod is out, it would have all been done, drop all done. Um, so too late. But hopefully by the time this podcast goes out, I will have a Supreme mini basketball hoop in my bedroom or in my living room. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Um, but yeah, I'm buzzing for that. It's a pretty good price at 78 pounds as well, but the rest of the drop is, is pretty mid. But um, thankfully for us Supreme fans, we should be seeing some hype in the next few weeks. It's coming up to box logo season, early December. Um, we're seeing a couple of, uh, of uh, allegedly um, uh, old previous box logos re-release, uh, the camo one for example, and he has a couple of new ones as well. So it's a good time to be into Supreme. I want the basketball hoop, and hopefully by the time this podcast goes out, I would have taken a big fat dub. Palace also back this week, and they're dropping on Friday, and they've got some absolute heat. And to be fair, finally, they're getting a bit more recognition. I feel like the Palace hypes really came back Everyone's like adoring Palace at the moment. If you go onto the fashion TikTokers or Instagram, whatever, everyone's repping and talking about Palace and how they're doing bits. Uh, and they are dropping some really cool shit. They've got this week, I think they've got camo parkers, they've got fleeces, they've got bobble toys. Like it's a huge, huge lookbook drop. Um, yeah, we've got some really fire pieces going, man. And lots of fleeces as well. Um, yeah, should be a really good drop, but probably nothing for me exactly. There's nothing like rolls like off the tip of my tongue that I really, really want. But um, yeah, it's good to see Palace get the kind of, not, not hype as such, but definitely that demand back that they, they, they used to have back in the day. And I don't think there's any Trifergs releasing this week. So like, it's not like based on like the iconic brand and either they're just smashing it, man. Like Palace have really kept up with, not trends, but just the evolution of streetwear and fashion and London streetwear. I mean, these guys have absolutely smashed it. They're so versatile. Um, and yeah, it's good to see Palace. Palace smashing it again. We've put some of the some of the best garms on, on the screen right now. They are releasing like a bobblehead palace toy. It's got this kind of, it's like the green one. I'm gonna buy that, pick it up tomorrow, I think. Or as of again, when the podcast goes out, it would have been last week. I hopefully would have got it. It shouldn't like sell out too quick, so it should be an easy pickup. Um, but yeah, Palace is smashing it. Another good drop from them. Um, and yeah, that's that. Now these aren't exactly brand new news, it's not a massive news, it's not a big drop, it's not a huge sneak up, but next week or this week as you're watching the pod, there will be a Bacon Nike Dunk Glow releasing. Uh, releases for quite high retail at £130, but I love the colorway, it's sick. And the Bacon colorway first debuted, there might have been one before this, but from my understanding it first debuted in 2004 on the Air Max 90. And then back in 2021 to celebrate Air Max Day, they brought a new, well, the same, they re-released the Bacon colorway on an Air Max 90. Um, and then they're bringing it to a Nike Dunk Low. Now it's a normal Dunk Low, I'm not really that interested in normal Dunks usually. However, um, it's a Bacon colorway, it's sick. I'm gonna buy it, retail is high. Saying that, I might not, it's not, I'm saying, well, I might not 100% buy it. I'm gonna see how the week goes. It's a sneaker convention at the weekend, so I don't know how much money I'm gonna spend. But if I don't spend a stupid amount, the Bacon Nike Dunks will be mine. Um, and I'm looking forward to them releasing. For you Cortez fans, you're in luck because we are seeing another Nike collaboration. Well, the Nike collaboration from last year is going again. Uh, they've got a really good relationship together, apparently, and sources close to Clint, allegedly, according to outlets like Hypebeast, we can set to see, we are expecting to see a Hirachi and Cortez shoe next year. Uh, I think the rumor is either summer next year or fall next year. So like kind of maybe this time next year, we might see a couple of colorways. Um, yeah, Clint was spotted rocking a 2003 Hirachi, I believe. I could be a little bit wrong, but I think that's what the outlet said. Um, and yeah, the, the, apparently the word on the street is that we're seeing a Cortez Hirachi next year. We're not entirely sure. There's not really much info yet. It is literally just sources, sources close to the owner. 
have uh, kind of came out and, and apparently we're seeing a Cortez Hirachi, which is cool. The Hirachi is like a, not a shoe that's very popular at the moment. It's definitely had its day and it was really, really important to the streetwear culture, especially the London culture back in the day. And we know how Cortez and Clint stay, stay to their roots and celebrate London and the local scene. So I think it's a really good collaboration. It's great for the community. I don't particularly like the look of the mock-ups being released at the moment, but who cares? There's a lot more to the to the scene than just the silhouette. So hopefully it'll, it'll be interesting. We did see uh, Cortez and and Nike released their first collaboration earlier this year. It was leaked at the end of last year and drops earlier this year. And we do have that shoe with us today. So these are the Cortez Gutter Green Air Max 95s that released earlier this year. I think they released in March, they had a couple of releases. And they also released three other colorways. Uh, we had the blue and the pink beam. The pink beam was fire, but these the most iconic by far. Now they're absolutely sick. Uh, it's an Air Max, with some really nice Cortez branding. I'm not gonna talk too much about the actual design of the shoe because you guys would have seen it uh, all the time. It was super popular earlier this year. You probably had enough, you've seen enough TikToks and social media covering it. However, the best thing about this release was the fact that the, the amount of hype and views and the community really came together for this shoe, what I absolutely loved. And I think it was sick that a brand like Cortez that you know, founded fairly recently in 2018, um, could get a collaboration with a, the, the biggest brand on the planet, arguably the biggest sports and fashion apparel brand on the planet, planet in Nike. Um, it was sick and they produced a really good product, but the hype it produced was just amazing, man. It got people kind of into the scene, it got people into streetwear, everyone knew about it. And I know Clint hates being compared to other brands, but if you're gonna compare it to a certain hype or trend, it was definitely kind of like the 2016 hype we saw for Supreme a little bit. And I loved that, man. I thought it was really, really good because that's ultimately how people like me and my mates got into streetwear initially. Um, albeit it wasn't for like the, the like desired best reason. We weren't like into style or such, but we were just so fascinated by the marketing and how it got so many views and why people were going crazy on it and why the resale value is just four or 500 pound above retail in some circumstances. So yeah, it was nice, man. It really brought, I mean, Cortez and Air Max and, and Nike and Nike, Nike with this shoe created a, a bubble of what we used to see back in the day that made me really fall in love with streetwear and sneakers. So for me personally, I love the release. The shoe itself, um, I have a pink beam colorway. I don't have these, these are, these are for, I just bought these. These belong to Kicksforce, my resale business. Um, and we sell pre-love shoes. Uh, and yeah, we, we had these come in the other day, so I thought I'd bring them in because they're relevant to what's going on with Cortez at the moment. But yeah, man, these, these are, are really fire and the actual release itself meant a lot to me and probably a lot of people who are into sneakers and the community in general. We also had confirmation this week that one of the most hyped SBs this year is releasing on the 14th of December, and that is the Power Puff Dunk Collection. Now there's three Power Puff Dunks releasing. I think we're seeing the Blossom colorway, the Bubbles colorway, and the other one is called Buttercup. I'm, I'm having to look at the script here because I have absolutely no idea about Power Puff Girls, which is probably a good thing, or it would be a little bit weird. Uh, but yeah, there's three, three, three colorways releasing, a blue, a pink, and a green. They all have their own details going on. Our retail is expected to be around 120, 130, and it's confirmed that on the 14th of December, it will be dropping in skate shops. Now we don't have a confirmed release date on the sneakers app, I don't believe yet. Um, hopefully, I don't even know if they might, they might not even have a sneakers sneakers app release to be brutally honest. I know the, 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 these do give me a very similar vibe to the Fruity Pack uh, that released last year. We saw like a green apple colorway, a blue raspberry colorway, an orange pineapple colorway, and they were really fire. Um, and yeah, these Powerpuff Dunks do have some really, really fire detail on. Like I said, the shoes come in three colorways. We've got the blue, the pink, and the green. Uh, the blue and the yellow is definitely for me. I like the yellow laces. They also have a heart on the lace hole as well, which is sick. Uh, I think overall the collaboration is, is decent. It is very bold. It is very SB Dunk. Like if you like your SB Dunks, you'll know that SBs are very, very used to doing crazy collaborations. You have the What The Dunks, the Pool Dunks, some really, really crazy pieces over the years. Um, the Street Hawker Dunks as well is another one that comes to mind. And they have these crazy designs, big colors, bold pieces, and lots of hidden details as well. So I expect to see that with the Powerpuff Girl Dunks. Um, I might try and buy the blue ones. I might try and buy the blue ones, but they are very, very bold. Uh, you're gonna have to be really good at styling. If you're, if you're into your fashion, it's gonna be difficult to rock. But uh, yeah, I think the, I'm really into the SBs at the moment. I love the kind of details. Um, the hidden details especially, I think I've really matured recently in terms of like my sneaker habits. I think back in the day I was very much into just the hype and the brand and buy, buy, buying whatever is trending. But now I'm a lot more into the, the SB symbolizes a lot, like a lot more what I'm into in terms of sneakers anyway, in terms of I like the detail, uh, the hidden details, the meaning behind it. Um, and yeah, man, I think it will be a, it will be a good collaboration. Maybe if you're into your SBs and collecting, it might be one for you. I think, mean, like I said, the blue one for me is a hit. The other two, the green and pink, are a pass.
Now away from fashion and sneakers for a little bit, we do have a really cool collaboration that's been confirmed to be releasing in December between Pokemon, Tiffany & Co and Daniel Arsham. Now Daniel's a, a really big artist in the scene, he's pretty popular, I think he's got millions and millions of followers to be fair, and then combine that with Pokemon, which is a huge fran franchise, and Tiffany & Co, which is one of the biggest accessory brands on the entire planet, which is very expensive by the way, um, they've got a really, really, really cool collaboration coming. I've got a lot of pendants, I believe, a couple of like custom Pokemon balls. So if you're into your Pokemon, it is definitely for you. Uh, the one downside about the collaboration is the price. It retails, I believe, or the potential starting retail price is 1.2K all the way up to nearly £30,000. I think it's $29,000, which is mental. So um, yeah, if you're into your Pokemon, Tiffany & Co, this might be for you. For those of you football fans who are interested in the greatest of all time, Lionel Messi, uh, there's actually an auction going down between the 30th of November and the 4th of December, I believe, for his match-worn Argentinian World Cup shirts. I mean, there's six of them, and these shirts are actually expected to sell for $10 million. Now, that is going to be, that is going to place mark these shirts as the highest ever sold football or sporting out across all sports collectibles and that's including beating stuff like baseball cards that are insanely expensive and all other football memorabilia so if you're into that uh, i don't know who's actually going to be able to afford that type of stuff they're going to be incredibly expensive some museums will be buy them up collectors whatever but 10 million pound for a football shirt a singular football shirt one by Lionel messi is crazy and for those of you football fans who don't have 10 million pounds to spend on a match-worn Leo Messi shirt, uh, Adidas are releasing a capsule collection of vintage retro Adidas shirts. A lot of South American teams are involved, and the most hyped one is actually Diego Maradona's football uh, number 10 shirt from the 94 USA World Cup. Uh, there's also a host of other uh, retro kits and stuff releasing, including jackets as well, which is really popular. And obviously, like I've said on previous episodes, the collaboration and the crossover between football and fashion has never been closer. So if you're into your football and if you're into your fashion, this one could be for you. The Crocs hype has gone crazy this season, and to be honest, all year it's been absolutely mental. We see that we saw that again this week on the 22nd of November, as Crocs collaborated with, yet again with Coca-Cola following their McDonald's release last week. Uh, we saw three different, I say silhouettes, it's all the same silhouette, but three different colorways or three different designs released. We saw a vibrant Sprite drop, uh, we saw a polar bear one, and we saw the classic Coca-Cola one. Uh, they also came with customized gibbets. I know a lot of you guys are into Crocs and you can customize what you actually rock on your feet with the little gibbet things, which I don't really mess with at all, but they're pretty cool. Um, so yeah, if you're into your Crocs, that one's for you. I didn't really, I didn't pay any attention to it, to be brutally honest. Um, I think the Crocs hype has just gone insane now. They're like overdoing it. It's like every week they have a massive collaboration. Um, so I passed. I think when you do a collaboration with cars like Lightning McQueen, you can't really go any higher. Um, you can't really beat it. So yeah, I passed on this one, but maybe some of you guys picked them up. I don't think they're sold out yet. You can buy them on, uh, on Crocs. I think they're about £55 retail, £50 retail, maybe even a little bit lower. Um, but yeah, $70 US. And uh, yeah, an interesting collaboration for sure, but one I passed on. Now, last week was pretty dry. There wasn't too much releasing, but as I said on last week's episode, there was the Supreme Fleece Mask Politech. Uh, Oh, quarter zip, I guess. And it's really sick. Um, I did pass on it on release, but I've managed to pick it up now. I bought a purple colorway. Uh, I, I got onto the site a little bit late last week and the only one left was the yellow one and I decided to skip that. But thankfully, we now have the purple one and it is very, very cool. Now it does have this kind of like balaclava type inspired mask. It's not a bally as such, because it is a zip and it doesn't cover your entire face and it's it's not bally bally, but it's the, probably the closest thing you're gonna get to it. It's kind of a ski mask vibe. Um, but it's really nice, man. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I like the little uh, Supreme patch just below the zip. Uh, the quality is great. It's a Polartec fleece, so you know with Polartec the, the, the materials are fantastic. Um, it's very, very warm. The retail is 128. There is a little bit of resale. I think this particular one in the size small is probably moving for like 180 plus. Um, but yeah, it's a really fire piece. Probably the best pickup I've had this week. Probably the only pickup, of, the only interesting pickup I've had this week. Um, but yeah, man, for sure, really five piece for winter. The best thing about this time of year for me is like all the brands starting to drop these kind of fleece type uh, garments. I, I absolutely love Polar Tech and I love fleeces. Not a, not insanely keen on the Bally. Uh, it would be nice if there was a bit more variation in it in terms of the, the balaclava. Maybe they could have had a, I don't know, you could wear it in a slightly different way because I quite like having a zip all the way up on my, my fleeces and quarter zips. But if you have it all the way up, it's just so tight on the neck. So it does really make you kind of have to force you to wear the ballet. Uh, but no, the actual the actual quality is great. Super warm um, and definitely a really good pickup. And so if you are looking for a, maybe a fleece this winter, I definitely, definitely recommend this one. 
Now we do have a slightly different segment in this podcast episode today. Um, I've been getting loads and loads of questions from you guys recently, so we put a Q&A out on my Instagram story, and there was probably a good like five, 6,000 responses. So uh, let's get it, boy. Now there was loads of great questions, a lot of inappropriate ones that I cannot put in this, uh, <laughs> in this podcast. Uh, however, the first one I got that really caught my eye was uh, what is the one item you've owned uh, that you sold and you uh, like basically regret selling? So what is the one item I bought that I regret selling? Um, and I actually got rid of my Stone Island Thermal Ice Knit, uh, which was released in 2017. I bought it earlier this year in February. I paid about two grand for it. Uh, it was crazy, so expensive, probably one of the rarest pieces I've ever, ever owned. And I think now in the secondary market, it's gone up even more. I literally sold it for the price that I, I paid for it, um, maybe even a little bit lower. I think after fees, are probably a little bit lower. I definitely didn't make any money on it at all, but um, it, I did get a lot of views out of it, which was sick. Uh, but yeah, I think now in a secondary market, it literally shifts for like 2.5, 2.6. And it's one of those items that's almost like priceless because they're so little of them on the market and they're so in demand like i made um quite a few videos about trying to acquire one and i think across the, the few weeks of me making those vids i must have got like five six million views across the i don't know like three four videos and they really really popped off so the hype for that jumper was so in demand um and it was always in demand anyway like it wasn't it wasn't because of me it was always there it was a really like, iconic item and there's literally none of them about so yeah man i, I wish i i wish i maybe held on to it and sold it a little bit later so I could have profited and monetized on it a little bit more but um, yeah the actual jumper itself was a bit dry like it was just so heavy man I couldn't really style it I couldn't really rock it it was pretty uncomfortable and you never really want to be rocking anything that you feel uncomfortable in so yeah I, I got rid of it pretty swiftly pretty quickly when I was done with it um, and yeah unfortunately I lost out on quite a lot of money another popular question I got um, was along the lines of if this wasn't my full-time job uh, what would I be doing? Like, what alternative work would I be doing if I wasn't like into content or, or whatever you call this type of role? Um, to be honest, I don't actually know. Like, social media kind of had to work out for me because my health is pretty bad, so it's pretty difficult for me to work like a, a normal job. Like, everywhere I go, I have to bring like an insane amount of meds and. And I literally bring my girlfriend to any type of event because she's actually a doctor, so it helps whenever anything goes badly wrong. Um, so yeah, it would be a bit long for me to work like a traditional office job. I probably could do like an at-home role, so it would definitely be something boring at home. Um, I did study film at uni and um, I wanted to be an editor, uh, but thankfully I kind of, you know, TikTok and, and social media kind of popped off a little bit. So I just started pursuing that. Um, and yeah, that was it really. So to answer the question, I don't actually know. Um, I would like to say I would, have a, maybe a business or two like I do now but to be honest I think without the audience I've organically built I don't think I, it would be successful or at least it definitely wouldn't be as successful as it is now so it would be a hell of a lot more difficult um, so yeah probably a pretty shitty boring job sat at home and uh, yeah not doing quite as well some guy asked would you wear would you rather wear panda dunks for the rest of your life or go no socks for the rest of your life like basically barefoot I mean, this is referring to the fact everyone hates panda dunks and they're meant to be really, really shit. But oh, yeah, that's pretty easy for me, man. I would wear panda dunks, obviously. I mean, the hate to panda dunks is way over the top. Um, yeah, it's almost like a trend to hate on them now. If you watch, there's a TikTok I watch called Sneakonomics, who I'm um, good friends with. He's a really like, OG collector. Really knows his stuff about shoes, man. Like, like more than me in terms of like, actual OG sneakerhead. Um, and he made a video like ages ago, like uh, like kind of breaking down like the panda, the panda dunks hype. Uh, and the hate towards them as well. And I'm just basically saying they were super overhated. It's now a trend to hate them that much. They're ultimately a good shoe, hence why so many people bought them. They're black and white, they're wearable, they're accessible. I don't particularly, I don't wear them at all now. I don't hate, I've never ever owned a pair. I mean, I've sold like one pair back in the, like, I don't know, like a couple months ago with Kicks Force. Um, but yeah, I would easily do the Panda Dunks, bro. The Panda Dunks are way overhated, man. If you like the Panda Dunks, just, just wear them. Another question I got asked a lot this week in the Q&A comments was how did I basically get the podcast? How did I get involved with the fellow studios? Um, well, to be brutally honest, it was pretty simple. I got a DM from Cal Freezy on TikTok. Um, I jumped on a call with him and someone else who worked at the, the fellas. And then, yeah, that was it really. It was quite a long process because the studio like, took a long time to be built because it's like, so fucking good. 
Um, but it was definitely worth the wait, man. It was sick. It was probably the, the the biggest opportunity I've had so far in my career. It's definitely one of the, not, it's not the hardest at all, but it's definitely one of the freshest and the newest and the, the most difficult to get used to. Because having a podcast like on your own, solo, uh, with people in the room, with loads of cameras, with massive lights, it is like naturally really different to what I've done before. Um, so yeah, but hey, everyone here has been really supportive and it's been sick and hopefully uh, much more to come. All right, this is a good question. My favorite shoe collaboration. Now, I haven't had too much time to think about it, but if I was gonna go off my head right now, my most recent like loved shoe collaboration was probably the Supreme Star Dunks from 2021. Now, the reason I loved them was because the design's sick. Uh, I love the SB silhouette, super comfortable. I love the big tongue. Um, and yeah, they're a really cool shoe. But also, like I said, I love Supreme. I love Supreme, I actually really like Supreme shoes. And I, look, I do like Supreme and Nike. And I feel like Supreme and Nike often lack. They're, they're, there's quite a lot of poor collaboration between them. The designs are a bit shit. They often like, design on, on pretty like unpopular silhouettes. So to finally see a really cool design uh, that debuted back in the day in the, the early 2000s on the on the Nike Dunk High, um, the star design, to see that reinvented in the modern day in 2021 was really, really cool. Um, I did take a bit of an L that, that week, uh, that, that release. I didn't get hold of them like initially. I had to pay resale in the end. Um, excuse me. And now the hype has really, really, really like kind of shot up since, like the prices have, have shot up since like they first released. So what I did, was I was like, oh, it's fine, man. Like the resale's kind of 300 quid, 150 pound above retail. Um, and, and like this was not on the initial launch. And I just passed, man. I was like, they're gonna drop even more. But I was completely wrong. They're now worth, I don't know, if you want the green ones, they're probably worth about a grand. The blue ones, four to 500. I bought the blue ones for 500 quid. And the brown ones are a similar type of price and the black ones as well are, are kind of like four, five, 600 brand new. Um, so yeah, man, they're, they're, they're sick. Um, I have the blue ones, unfortunately, they're in like a little bit smaller size for me, so it's a bit of an L, but yeah, I, I do like that collaboration. In terms of like iconic collaborations, the, the Stussy Cherry SBs are sick. I like the Street Hawker Dunks. Um, the Stingwater Dunks are sick as well. I know not everyone likes them, but the red and the red and like kind of crazy Stingwater design is fire. I'm a big fan of them. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I just I just like SB collaborations because they're doing the most. I know a lot of people don't like these crazy you know, like super hyped designs, um, but I would much rather wear something like that as opposed to a little something a little bit more low key like a. I don't know, like a lot of New Balance crepes at the moment. It's sick, I love New Balance, they're fire. Like, uh, one of my, my mostly worn shoes at the moment is New Balance. Um, but some of the tones, like a lot of people brought the earth tones, the white and the khaki colors, and they're a lot more about style. But for me, I just like bold, bright shoes. Um, and I think that's why I love SB collaborations so much. Another question I got on this Q&A and just in general since launching the podcast was will you be bringing guests on? And the answer is yes, the plan is to bring guests on. We have a, a quite a long list of people who potentially could be coming on. And the reason we haven't brought in any guests on the first kind of few episodes or four episodes or whatever, it's probably for me like it's been like quite a, a not a daunting experience at all, but definitely a big learning curve. And I think before I started to bring someone else on, I wanted to make sure like I had the hang of it a little bit, got used to talking in front solo. Um, solo podcast is a lot different to, to anything I've ever done before, like I said previously. Um, so yeah, we've got some really good guests coming on, sneakerheads, people in the space, YouTubers, TikTokers, whatever, um, brand owners as well. Um, and yeah, man, it will be it will be good. So stay tuned because we will be having some very very good individuals rock up. Last couple of questions. Uh, this guy said, "What got you into fashion?" Uh, well, to be honest. The first thing I spoke about it before, and I'll, I'll go over it again because it's quite a cool story. It wasn't ever like, it's not like the actual fashion elements that interest me the most. It's not the style, it's not the proportions, it's not the cargo, it's not the how the silhouette looks for design. It's, for me, it's all about, I, I love the community and I still I still resonate with that now. But uh, yeah, back in the day, 2016, set the scene, Supreme. I was at college with my mates. We used to go to like this breakout room every Thursday just for a lecture. And back then, Supreme were dropping at 11 a.m., which was literally just as our break ended um, so we I would basically watch all my mates try and get hold of Supreme resale and just sell it on and I was like I'm just so fascinated by it it was like mind-blowing to me and numbing to me that people could actually do this and make money from Supreme and Palace and Nike and sneakers app and Air Maxes and whatever and just basically resell it was just so crazy um, 
so yeah, that was it really. And from then I've been absolutely addicted to it. And I have got a little bit more into style, but I mean, as you know, if you've watched my vids, you'll know that like style is never my like kind of number one priority. Um, it's definitely just buying cool shit, talking about it, making content about it, um, and just collecting stuff, man. Like, I love collecting stuff. And I think I've always had that inside me, like that the, the desire to collect rare shit, get hold of rare shit. I mean, there's literally no other, no better feeling than like, being able to cop something that's super limited and that feeling after you get get hold of it is just so so good after the anticipation and the success it is brilliant and yeah man the community there's no community like it there's no community like it at all so yeah, it's brilliant the people amazing man i wouldn't change it for the world so yeah college days a couple of my mates got me into it and that was it really from there i've been absolutely addicted so final question, the last one, before we get into it, I've literally just been scrolling through trying to find the final one. And I kid you not, every probably one in two uh, comments or questions is why are you dating your sister? What's happened to your sister? Where is your sister? How is it like dating your sister? Blah, blah, blah. You can imagine the rest. There's some very bad words on here I probably can't say, um, but it is what it is, man. I'm not dating her for the last time. We are not related, we're not siblings. Um, so yes, fuck you and stop, stop it. It's been going on for ages, man. Like, it's been going on for absolutely ages. I think it's like the, every kind of creator has their own like inside joke. It's now at the point where I literally get it in public all the time. I think literally a couple times a week, someone comes up to me and says, how's your sister? And it's usually a child. So I usually now get bullied by teenagers on the street. Um, but yeah, final question. A uh, big question that's really trending at the moment. I gave my opinion on it in, in, in a couple of weeks ago on, on a TikTok video of mine. And it's like, what are my honest opinions on replica sneakers and reps in general? Now, with the uh, virality of places like Panda Buy, services that let you basically buy from fake goods from China and import them to the UK for a really affordable amount, it's gone crazy, man. Fakes are absolutely everywhere. So my actual opinion on it has definitely changed recently because I have purchased a few reps from the UK. I haven't bought off overseas. I've just bought off people I know and not even bought. I've literally just rented me, like lent them to me so I can make some content with these fakes. Um, and yeah, the fakes are, are genuinely terrifying. They're absolutely terrifying how close they are. Like if you look at uh, any replica forums, they refer to something called as one-to-one -one, and the one-to-one -one refers to the replica sneaker being identical to the real one and they are almost one-to-one. -one. I don't think there's actually a one-to-one -one shoe because there's always a very small fundamental like difference that like goes way beneath the surface level. However, the shoes like by the naked eye without tearing them apart, ripping the insole up, looking like super, super close up at the small stitching, they are effectively identical, which is terrifying. Uh, and that leads me to the point that I really, really don't, that, that the, the one thing I really hate about reps is that there's genuine, there's people who are trying to buy the authentic sneaker and they just get scammed because the reps look so real and it's, it's just not fair. Um, people are trying to get into shoes and the culture and streetwear all the time, but it makes it really difficult to buy off the secondary market and the resale market when there's so many replicas about. Um, on top of that, there is, you know, a, a, a lot of negatives around it, around smaller brands. Smaller brands often get, you know, there's only so much stock smaller brands put out. And as soon as one replica manufacturer sees the popularity of a, of a really small brand, we're not talking about like brands like Nike and Adidas and Yeezy or whatever, and Jordans, but some really small brands on some occasions do like take like a, a big hit through like the, the mass manufacturing of, of reps um, and it kind of ruins the marketing and the community and yeah it is, is a shame there's also a lot of like child labor stuff and, and like actual really serious political stuff but unfortunately that isn't just in replica sneakers and fashion in general that's just that sorry in, in, in replica fashion and streetwear that is literally in fashion in general um, but I do get it. I do understand why people mess with reps. Um, uh, I understand that everything's so expensive and they're trying to fit in. And there's not as much of a difference as people think there is between people who buy the real deal and reps. Ultimately, we're all buying it for the same reason. We all want to fit in. We all like the design. We all just want to buy a cool shoe or cool item of clothing. I'm definitely never going to buy a rep and like openly wear it. However, um, my opinion has definitely calmed down. I don't hate on anyone who rocks reps, but. Yeah, if you're selling reps is, 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 uh, is real, that's when I draw the line and I get like, I'm annoyed. Uh, and so are most people. But if you just wear reps and do your thing, man, and whatever, it doesn't really hurt anyone. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely the most interesting subject in the scene at the moment because the popularity around it is absolutely mental.
Right guys, big love for the support. It is finally time to wrap up the show. Um, yeah, make sure to check out the Hype Report on all socials, Spotify, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, we're all over there. Uh, if you do want to actually listen to the podcast, you don't have to watch it. I know we have a beautiful set here. Uh, thanks to the courtesy of the fellas. Uh, but you can listen to it on Spotify. We are available there and it is a good listen or listen to it on Spotify, sorry. Um, so yeah, get involved. I'll see you 6 p.m. Monday every week. Uh, and yeah, big love as always, people.